Hello, my name is Delia Scott. I'm an Agriculture Extension Associate at the University of Kentucky Department of Horticulture, and I am at the Horticulture Research Farm. Behind me, you can see part of the apple orchard is planted in the tall spindle system. This part of the orchard is about seven years old. And the video you are about to see is being demonstrated by Extension Professor Emeritus Dr. John Strang, who is a retired fruit and vegetable specialist. Today we're going to talk about pruning a tall spindle tree. Now this is a mature tree. This is a seven-year-old tree grafted onto a G41 rootstock down here, which is a dwarfing rootstock. Uh, we used to recommend pruning to a central leader tree. The last thing you want to do is head your central leader, and you want to head the leader roughly about two feet, two and a half feet above your first whirl of scaffold limbs. So, uh, but we've gone to this tall spindle tree, particularly for commercial orchards. Several reasons. Number one, the conical space in the center of the tree that's shaded, where we don't get well-colored fruit and not as, good, uh, 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 not as good a spur development, is very small in this tree. So we get a higher pack out of quality fruit off of a tree like this. Only permanent part of this tree is the leader right here. We continue to renew these limbs over time and take older ones out and bring newer ones in. So this keeps the spurs young and vigorous and we get excellent quality fruit off of a tree like this. Higher sugar contents, better color on the fruit. These are trained on a trellis. Uh, this trellis is nine feet tall. The posts are uh, 12 feet tall, put into the ground uh, three feet. Uh, the wires are at nine feet. Typically, a second wire will be on six feet at six feet, and we've got a, a stake by each tree. A cheaper trellis for commercial growers is to go with a five wire trellis without paying for this post right here. Uh, the limbs are clipped to the wires, and we get a, a, a tree that is held up. These trees have to have a trellis because that graft union is brittle and the the rootstocks on these have uh, brittle roots. Uh, strong trellis is very important. You've got to have a, it braced at the end very well. This one has a, a wire that goes from the top of the post down to a screw anchor in the ground. Another type of very strong brace at the end is the H brace that uh, has two posts and a, and a post in the middle. Uh, that makes a very strong trellis. Uh, these trees are spaced four feet apart in the row here, and the rows are 12 feet apart. That's about 907 trees per acre. The golden number on this type of trellis is 1,000 trees per acre. A lot of growers are planting the trees three feet apart right now, and then the rows 12 or 13 feet apart. Typically on uh, these tall spindle plantings, we have a drip irrigation tube uh, attached to the bottom wire so we don't hit it with equipment. The, the emitters are generally about two feet apart and they're inserted into the tube. You can see the graft union right down here. We've got to be very careful these trees don't get planted too deep because if the, the gold rush part of this tree roots, it becomes a full-size standard tree. Now this G41 rootstock it gives us a tree that's about 35 to 40 percent the size of a standard tree. So it is a dwarfing rootstock. We like to have that graft union about six or eight inches above the soil line that increases the amount of dwarfing that you get on the tree. Uh, and you've got to be real careful when you're planting these trees that these trees don't settle down and you get that graft union below the soil level so that the cyan roots. Voles are a problem in apple trees. In the winter, they gnaw the bark off the roots and a lot of that occurs underneath of the ground. Uh, one way to prevent that is to put gravel down around the base of the tree and that is sharp and the voles don't like being in that and so that gives us bowl protection. Fire blight is a big problem with tall spindle trees. We have no leeway for fire blight. It kills the trees. You can see this shoot was killed down to about right here and in the dormant season we try to prune that out. Uh, the infections occur in the spring and uh, part of the summer, so commercial growers will spray with copper in the dormant season and then use streptomycin during bloom. You can see we've got some fire blight right here. <clears throat> it's killed this shoot that occurred last summer, and uh, this needs to be pruned out of the tree in the dormant season. Uh, some varieties are very susceptible, particularly some of the ones we're planting now, uh, like uh, uh, Honeycrisp and, and Gala and so forth. 
we're getting away from tying these branches down in these systems where uh, shearing the trees or cutting the young shoots. So when the young shoots come out and they're about 12, they have about 12 leaves on them, we'll come in and tip the more vigorous ones. Uh, that uh, gets rid of what we call blind wood or areas in the shoot that don't have spurs on that aren't productive, causes that branch to uh, branch and it develops spurs a little later in the season back in the tree and helps get more sunlight back into the interior of the tree. Uh, when the trees get old like this, uh, growers will go through with a sickle bar mower and, and shear those off. It's real critical with uh, these trees to, after you, you clip them, to spray with a, a copper such as uh, Cueva or uh, Magna Boss CS uh, 2005. Uh, those are very mild copper materials. Copper will russet the fruit, so you use this dilute and you spray it at the low rate. You do it the day that you uh, clip those trees and you want to make sure that it's not wet or it's not going to rain because if the foliage is wet, uh, that moves into the fruit, moves into the foliage and you can get injury from copper. Uh, the other thing is not to overload the trees. We don't want too many fruit on the trees. If you've got too many fruit, you get smaller fruit, you get lower sugar content fruit, and they just don't have the flavor that that variety is supposed to have. So uh, thinning is really critical. Up in the top of the tree here, we don't want this getting more than about two feet above the, the top wire here. So when the tree gets too tall, we cut it back to a, another leader. Uh, this one is about the right height, so uh, this is our leader up here, so I'm just going to take this branch off of here like that to get it out of the way. And even if the branches aren't too big, you always want to take two or three of the larger branches out of that tree in any one year to keep renewing those branches. This is a larger one right here. Now on real vigorous trees like Fuji and Golden Delicious, we'll use the uh, two finger rule. We'll put two fingers in here and then we'll cut that branch off two fingers out. Now this is a, a gold rush tree. It's not as vigorous. Uh, so we leave a longer uh, branch stub right here. So we leave a three or four inch uh, finger stub. Uh, previously we made uh, uh, bench cuts on a branch and cut them off tried to cut them off parallel with the ground. The idea is that the buds underneath it here throw new branches. Now, with speed, we're just happy to get that branch cut off at the proper length. So we're gonna take that one off, and I'm gonna take this one off down here. Uh, this one is moving into the row. It has the potential to interfere with our tractor, so we're gonna uh, stub this one back. Again, about a, a three-finger spot there. You can see right here, uh, this one was cut off previously and it didn't produce another branch. Uh, you can see uh, a stub here that was cut off. We've got another branch coming in here. Okay, we've got the top fixed up. Uh, we've got our branches uh, selected and uh, we've got a few too many branches up here in the top of the tree. They're a little too close. So I'm just going to take uh, a, a couple of these out that are a little tight. That one's right over top of this one. And then the next thing we want to do is what we call singulate the branch or collimate them. We want a branch coming out with just spurs. These trees produce flowers from spurs. The spurs are either lateral or they're terminal or both. And each one of those uh, buds right there has five flowers in. So we have the potential for a lot of fruit on this little tiny branch and we don't need that much. So uh, we want to take uh, a few of the lateral branches off. This one is spurred up. We don't need to take anything off. That one's vigorous. We'll take that off. We've got one here that's coming out to the side. Up top here, we're going to cut these off and leave this, this branch is spurred up really well. That one's going to the sky. I'm going to take that one out of there. We want to thin this out. We want to be able to get sunlight in here. If we've got too many branches, we can't get the sun in and get our uh, spurs developed. So we're going to take some of these laterals off here. Uh, right here, uh, we've got uh, uh, a vigorous one coming up there. We'll take that one out. Uh, the these limbs have been tied down previously 
Uh, with newer training systems, we're not tying them down anymore. That one's in close to the trunk. You can see this was lopped off previously. We've got a new branch coming here. We're gonna cut this one back to a, a spur and singulate this limb. If, if the limb is getting too long, getting over into the other tree, we will cut it back to a spur to shorten it up. Previously, we talked about having a, a tree with 10 branches on with 10 fruit. And now we're looking for a lot of smaller branches with, with fewer fruit on them. Thank you so much for that pruning demonstration, Dr. Strang. We appreciate your time and your expertise. For more information on tall spindle apple tree trellis systems, please check out publications from the University of Kentucky Department of Horticulture.